So my name is Pat Lowry. I am the CEO and managing partner of Iconic Holding, which is a Germany-based digital asset management firm and decentralized venture capital group. Uh, we also have offices in London and New York. And I'm here today to talk to you guys about how this new digital asset class is completely redefining our financial infrastructure, as well as touching and will be changing each and every aspect of our modern society. But before we get started, can anybody tell me first what a digital asset is? Is anyone familiar with any? No? Oh, Bitcoin. Bitcoin. Everybody has heard of Bitcoin before. Bitcoin is a piece of blockchain technology that is distributed across thousands of computers all over the world. And leveraging this technology, we can create a new financial asset class. Now, there isn't just Bitcoin. There are thousands of other cryptocurrencies, digital assets, and blockchain protocols that earlier this year had a valuation of over $800 billion. And the emergence of this technology has led to a fascinating new piece of technology called a smart contract. And leveraging a smart contract, a new alternative financing method for early stage companies has come into existence known as an ICO. And the ICO has led to $21 billion being raised by startups. And this is having a profound impact on not just the modern economy, but also the natures of companies themselves. Where entrepreneurs do no longer build companies but rather they build communities. And no longer is the value for those companies distributed to the shareholders, the financial backers of those companies, but rather it's distributed amongst the communities themselves, amongst the stakeholders and those that are the actual users of the platforms themselves. And large corporates are starting to notice and they are starting to work on building digital asset mechanisms within their own business infrastructure. And I know this because I'm advising multiple of them in Germany. And this is leading to a profound impact on the financial institutional market. Because no longer are stocks and bonds, typical investments done through paper. No longer will stock certificates be held in Iron Mountain with a custodian bank such as Bank of New York Mellon or State Street Bank, but they will be secured leveraging blockchain technology and its cryptographic language and distributed amongst the communities that engage with these platforms. And this will lead to very profound societal effects. Most importantly, it will decentralize wealth generation. We're no longer well, accredited investors, a term in the United States, in Europe it's known as a professional or semi-professional investor, have exclusive opportunity to invest into what has been historically the largest generator of wealth, early stage companies. But communities and individuals will participate in this growth. And this will lead to a rebirth of the middle class in addition to unprecedented growth in emerging economies. As these emerging economies will be able to build their own communities, leveraging the technology itself. And most importantly, it will solve one of the biggest issues of our time. It will create a non-governmental and completely private industrial based universal basic income for every single member that participates in these communities through the solicitation of their own private data to the community for the monetization effect of their own data. But first we're going to go back to the beginning and I'm going to tell you how I first started to get into blockchain and how it's going to be impacting your life as well too because it impacted mine in a very profound way that I did not foresee coming. So this was me on my very very first day in private equity and I was on top of the world. I had just come out of PricewaterhouseCoopers PwC and was working at a private equity firm based in Philadelphia. But I did a very, very dumb thing. I met a very lovely young German girl, fell in love, and much to the chagrin of my mother, got married. And I found out at a very, very young age, uh, or not at a young age, but very early in my marriage, that there is only one acceptable answer when your wife wants something. And that's yes. <laughs> so when my wife asked me if I would be willing to move to Germany with her, of course the answer was, well, yes, dear. And me being the uh, arrogant American that I am, I moved off to Germany thinking I would be able to get a job in private equity there. As it turns out, getting a job in a very specialized financial field in a different country, specifically Germany, is very difficult to do when you don't know German. <laughs> so I had to pivot my career a little bit 
And I started working in the venture capital space and actually got a job with the Deutsche Börse venture capital team. Uh, Deutsche Börse, of course, being the German stock exchange. And leveraging blockchain technology at a stock market operator is very, very valuable. It processes transactions at what will inevitably be very scalable speeds. So we started looking at investing into early blockchain companies. But what happened was very, very interesting. In about mid to late 2016, some of these companies rejected our offers. They wouldn't take our money. We couldn't give our money to these companies, which is just absolutely baffling. Why was this happening? Well, they told us it's because we're going to do an ICO, an initial coin offering. What now? So we did our own research, looked into the space, and determined that an ICO, which is effectively the issuance of a digital footprint of a company to a community, not to shareholders, could be used as an alternative means of financing for early stage companies. And this is what inevitably led me to founding Iconic Holding. And before we jump into that, we have to first answer our question, what is blockchain? Because I'm sure there's a lot of people that still don't understand the technology. And a lot is being made of it, that it's Web 3.0, it is Industry 4.0, it's a decentralized internet. Effectively, it's a distributed ledger of transactions across thousands of computers across the world at any given time. And a lot of smarter people than I have tried to put together these crazy diagrams that obviously nobody understands to try to portray this to the average individual. And I'm going to try my very best to make it as simple and sweet as possible for what blockchain is. And the answer, of course, is that blockchain is nothing but data. That's it. Sweet, simple. But it's a bit more than that. Because unlike the internet, where the data is not secure, it's not safe, and it can be hacked, blockchain, using cryptographic languages, is 100% secure, 100% transparent, and completely distributed and decentralized in its processing, which creates a safe and secure internet. Going back to Bitcoin, Bitcoin itself leverages this technology as a cryptocurrency, an anonymous peer-to-peer -peer transacting, where individuals in America can transact with Japan in seconds, leveraging the technology. And it also operates as a store of value, a so-called digital gold. But I posit to you that Bitcoin is actually much simpler than that. Bitcoin is nothing more than the world's safest database because it is a distributed ledger of all these different transactions that is virtually unhackable. But there's more than just Bitcoin. There's Ethereum, there's Litecoin, there's Monero, there's Dash, hundreds if not thousands of other different cryptocurrencies. And they all have different functionalities, not just peer-to-peer -peer transacting. For instance, there is a new revelation called a smart contract that can be built on top of these blockchains. That effectively led to the institution of an ICO because a smart contract is nothing more than a complex and automated if-then statement similar to what you see in Microsoft Excel. And using this, early stage companies in the blockchain space decided to issue digital footprints of themselves, digital tokens, through what is called an ICO, where the community provides financial capital to the company to be able to develop its protocol, develop its business operations, and solicit it back to that community. It's very similar to an IPO, except done at an early stage company level, not at a large stage corporate. And what this does is incentivizes user engagement with the platform. Because now, instead of a Facebook only being there for the sole benefit of its shareholders, individuals can provide content to the platform and it'd be rewarded in doing so in a monetizable fashion. They can provide their own data to the platform and can be rewarded for doing so in a monetizable fashion. And this is why everybody should care, because it creates a fully trustless, globally inclusive, and distributed financial ecosystem through these digital financial instruments. And every major player in the world is getting involved with this, where even uh, the Goldman Sachs CFO just last week, and I hate being in the US where I can actually use this term, said it was fake news that they weren't getting into Bitcoin. And this is leading to a revolutionary instance 
in the evolving of companies. So let's go back and take a look at how companies have evolved over the last 30 years. In the 80s and 90s, cash was king. Effectively, as long as a company was distributing dividends, it was valued very, very highly. You move forward to the early 2000s, and companies were evaluated based on the perceived use cases of their technology. This led to the tech boom, which inevitably led to the dot-com bubble. Then you move forward to the late 2000s, and effectively these companies were valued simply because they weren't bankrupt at the time. Um, moving forward into today, and you look at Silicon Valley, and these companies are evaluated based on what is called in the industry a KPI, a key performance indicator, which is basically just a fancy way to say, how can I make money off of the users of that platform? How can Facebook make money off of the people that provide their own data to Facebook by selling it to advertisers? What Facebook did was created a community, but monetizes that community for themselves. This is changing through distributed ledger technology, where today, using the same company building practices, building these communities, but not distributing wealth generated from that community to the shareholders, but rather to the community itself, will lead to profound societal impacts. And now you can see where we've come full circle back to that new global paradigm where entrepreneurs will continue to build these communities, not companies. The financial infrastructure will be changing because stocks and bonds will be issued leveraging the blockchain technology, not just digital tokens. Decentralized wealth generation will occur, which will rebuild a middle class and allow for emerging economies to become worldwide global players and non-governmental universal basic income will find its way into the houses of every single person in the world. And there's lots of benefits for investors. For instance, it creates transparent and incentivized KPIs that are going to be able to make money. Of course, the world works around money. And it allows for investment growth through incentivization for users to engage with the platform. It also creates immediate liquidity of the assets. Because like an IPO for a stock, the assets are tradable right away, unlike a traditional startup where the equity is locked away for about seven years. And lastly, it creates a trustless investment security environment where stock certificates no longer have to be held at a Bank of New York Mellon, but rather they're stored on an unhackable digital network. And the global benefits are profound. This will allow for individuals like yourselves to participate in the highest generating wealth asset class the world has ever seen early stage companies, and it will be the ones that you believe in, not the ones that Silicon Valley investors decide you should believe in. It allows for emerging economies to build themselves around their own communities, and allows for financial inclusion through seamless transactions to reach them from Western money to build those communities. And through the solicitation of your own private data to these communities, to these platforms. You'll be able to monetize it yourself, which is estimated to be worth a few thousand dollars per year, creating a universal basic income for every single individual. But with everything as revolutionary as I'm saying right now, there are hurdles. And of course, the most predominant one is regulation. Because the SEC has determined that a lot of these instruments are securities and should be regulated as such, thus allowing them to be only participated in by the accredited investors. This is going to be changing as we start to develop a modern definition of a security. Awareness needs to occur. People like me need to be reaching out to people like you to discuss what the overall benefits of these types of new financial instruments are and what the profound impact on our society they will have. And of course, the infrastructure needs to be built. Blockchain itself as a technology is in its very, very early stages. And it needs to be scalable before it can have mass adoption. And before I leave, I wanted to leave you with, with one final thought. We look back today, 25 years ago, and find it very hard to fathom a world where every single company that we engage with on a daily basis didn't have a website on what was known as the internet at that time. And I posit to you that 25 years from now, this very day, we will look back and completely be unfathomed why companies did not have a tokenizable blockchain layer that incentivized their users' engagements with these platforms. Thank you very much.
Yeah.